Hey, it's Chris here from Easel. Welcome to another DIY design tutorial. Today I'm going to take you through some of the best ways to use images and graphic elements together in your design. Let's get started. Here are a few rules I always like to stick to. First of all, it's really important to choose the right images that will work in harmony with your graphic elements. You want to choose images with as much negative space as possible. Images on simple backgrounds like these are perfect. Even if the image is cropped a bit tighter, as long as it's on a simple background, we can use Easel's background remove tool to cut it out perfectly. Try to choose images that are cropped out on one or two sides only. This gives you way more freedom for placement of elements and text on your design. Limit the amount of elements you use and try to keep them in a similar style. You can always duplicate the same element to keep everything looking consistent. Use graphic elements in your design to accent, give interest or highlight. Never overpower your images or text. Just like limiting the amount of graphic elements you use, the same applies to using colors. Don't go color crazy. Always remember the one or two rule. To complement your hero color, try using light or dark shades of it to keep everything looking in harmony. Today I'm going to show you five really easy ways to use graphic elements and images together in your design. Some different options of using drop zones and image frames, as well as Easel's background remove feature. So let's get started. I'm going to create a story sale design. So I'll click on story size here and just scroll down till I create from blank. So first of all, uh, the first design that we're going to do is going to be an image that's the full background. So I'm going to go to the images and upload my first image. So once that's uploaded, you'll see it appear here in the um, images tab. So what I want to do is keep my design nice and tidy. So I'll just go into graphics and let's put a photo frame in here in the photo grids. So I'll just extend that to my full artboard. I'll go back up to my images and let's just drag and drop that image into that frame. So as you can see, this image has heaps of negative space, which is what we're really looking for. Um, it gives you heaps of options and freedom in your design. You can see that um, we can position it anywhere we want. Um, we can also enlarge it within that frame. And you can see it's got a lot of negative space to add text and elements to, which is perfect. So we'll just crop that down. So next of all, we want to add some graphic elements into our design. So we'll go into the graphics tab here on the right hand side and let's search for something like pattern. So there are a heap of options that um, show up, but I'll just scroll down until I find something that I want to use. So this little hand-drawn pattern is perfect. So I'll just click on that. And let's just crop it off the edge of our design. Um, let's also convert it to white, just using the colored palette here. Let's add some more elements in. So I'll search for something like brush. You can see there's a heap of elements that show up. I'll just um, again, scroll down to find something that I want to use. So this little squiggle is perfect. We'll grab that one and put it onto our design. So I'll just enlarge it slightly. And again, let's convert it to white. Keeping all your um, graphic elements in the same color tone um, or keeping it in the same color like white or black is also a really good tip. So let's search for one more element, um, something like circle or ring. And just scroll down until you find something that you want to use. This one is perfect. We'll also crop that off the edge and convert it to white. So let's now add the text. So click on the text tab, click, um, click or drag to add text up here. That's going to give you a little text box. And let's add in something like 40% off. Give the space as well. Let's change that to something like Jost, which is one of my favorite fonts at the moment. Bold it up because it's a heading and we'll change the font size to something like 120. We can even um, 
give it a bit more kerning or letter spacing as well. So center that so it's nice. Um, and then we'll duplicate that and add a call to action, something like today only. We don't need that to be that big, so we'll drop that down in size and let's get rid of the bold off it as well. So there you can see it's our first design using images and elements together, keeping all the elements in one color and cropping them off the artboard slightly is a really good tip. So let's look at the second design. If your image doesn't have a heap of negative space or it's cropped a bit tighter, you can always drop it into a shape mask. So let's go to graphics and search in shape masks. Um, there's a heap of options that come up. Um, let's look at it like a organic -y sort of blob shape. So I'll just scroll down until I find something that I like. This shape here is perfect. So we'll drop that onto the artboard. Make it a bit bigger. And then we can get our image and drag and drop it into that shape. If you double click on it, you can enlarge it within that shape as well. So when I'm happy, I'll just click crop. And I can then remove that image frame in the background. So I'll go to my layers here and just arrange that to the back. And now I wanna add a background color. So I'll go up to my color tab at the top here. I'll click on a color from my image colors. So this pink is great. I can always adjust it using the color picker. And let's go something a little bit lighter so I can see the edge of my shape mask. I might just move her in a bit and I'll click crop again. You can also arrange your elements to be behind or in front of that shape mask. So in this case, I'll drop that element behind and I'll move this element down a bit. As you can see, that's another really simple option to using images and elements together. Let's look at our third design. To get more creative using elements and images, I'm gonna remove the background entirely from the main focus image and get some layering happening in my design. So first of all, I wanna go back up to my workspace and click on the easel logo on the top left-hand side. I then wanna go down to my images and you can see here, this is a fashion image that I was working with. If I select this black little circle drop down, I can select to remove background. This gives me a copy of the image that I was working with, but obviously with the background removed. I can then go back into my designs and click on the design I was working with. If I go back to images, you can see that image appears with the background removed. So let's apply that to our design. As you can see, there's a heap of negative space still around the image where the background was. So I'll just enlarge it slightly. And then I wanna use my crop tool up here and just bring in these guides to eliminate that blank space. And when you're happy, just press crop. And let's enlarge her slightly so she's now the main focus of our design. We can get rid of this image in the shape mask behind her. And just put her into the center. Now we can play around with a bit more layering. So if I go into my layers tab on the right hand side, I'll just bring her to the back. And as you can see, the elements like the hand drawn pattern and the ring and the squiggle all appear to the front. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this element um, a really good tip for using elements is to duplicate them, rotate them, enlarge them. So the style of them's all nice and consistent. So I'll just grab this one and let's move that to the back. And I'll shift this squiggle over to the right. I can position her a little bit differently as well. So I wanna add a few more color tones to this design as well. Like, as I said, only use a one or two rule, so don't get too color crazy. But um, let's click on this squiggle here and go up to our colors and make it the pink. And we'll just go to this color picker drop down and make it a bit of a darker pink. 
I'll also apply that color to this hand-drawn pattern. So as you can see, it, it appears in our template colors and I'll just select that. I can move this element down a bit to see a bit more of the element behind her. As you can see, this is another really good way of using elements and images together, but layering a bit more by using the easel background remove feature. If you want to get a bit more adventurous with the colors that you're using, or even add some of your brand colors into your design, um, this is how you do it. We'll select this hand-drawn pattern, go up to the color picker, and let's change it to one of our brand colors in here. So I'm going to go with this green tone. Um, let's change this squiggle in the background again using the color tool and we'll just go to the brand colors and let's select purple and we'll do this squiggle in green and same with this ring. I'm going to change the background color to, as you can see, it's getting a bit clashy with the colors. So I'm going to change this background color to white. And a really good tip for using a few more colors in your design is changing your focus image to black and white. So if I click on that and go up to filters, you can use a preset up here like black and white or willow, or go to back to normal, show more, and boost up the grayscale. That's gonna give you a really nice black and white tone. As you can see, we've got a few more colors in our elements, just the one or two rule, and we've changed our image to black and white. So now everything sits in harmony and doesn't clash. In the final design, I'm gonna use an element for the text to sit in. So I'll go up to my graphics, search for something like abstract. Circles work really well for this as well, but I'm gonna scroll down until I find a shape that's a little bit different. So something like this little abstract shape is perfect. So I'll click on that and it will apply to my artboard. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna change the background color. So I'm sc still gonna use my brand color. So I'll click on color up here and I'll go and change that background color to something like purple. Again, using that one or two rule, I'm just gonna update the shade of this squiggle in the background to something a little bit darker. So I'll click on the color picker and just go slightly darker. Then I can change this element to white. And enlarge it slightly and crop it off the edge. I'm gonna move this squiggle to the top and enlarge my focus image and crop it off to the right hand side slightly. I'll move this squiggle to the left and I'll go into my layers and I'll move it to the top. While I'm in my layers, I'll also make sure my text is at the top as well. And that's gonna sit in that white element that I've just added in. So I'll shift that down and I'll just make that into, into two lines and fix the line height as well. I'll tidy up all my text boxes and I'll move this today only down as well. This element might need to be a little bit bigger. So once that's nice and centered, I can select both text boxes and just enlarge it within that shape. I can play around with the arrangement of my elements in the layers. I might wanna bring that to the top or put it back. I might also wanna enlarge my focus image a little bit more. So as you can see, that's using elements to highlight the text and playing with layering of your elements. Remember just to keep the colors to a one or two rule and use shades to create interest. So that's about it for me today. As you can see, we've created five different designs all using images and elements together. Those are some great tips for using graphic elements with your images. I hope that helps you get more creative with your next easel design. Check out our other videos for more tips like these. Leave a comment below, give us a like if you enjoyed the content, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks heaps for watching.